If you want to prevent your opponents from going on scoring streaks, you need to be rock solid when you're the returning team. The catch to this is that when you're returning, your opponents are doing whatever they can to try to score on their serve. So if you want to be able to stop them, you need to know all the techniques and strategies that I'm going to take you through. The most important part to a returning strategy is the fourth shot or the shot that you hit after the return. And I'm going to teach you this, but first I want to go over the return itself. Helping me today, I have Drew, my sister Kennedy, and Kent. When you're returning, you have the advantage because you're the first team that can make it into the kitchen. If you're reckless though, it can be really easy to throw these points in the trash. So today, I'm gonna teach you how to prevent that, and this all starts with the return itself. But first, let's ask ourselves, what's the goal of the return? The goal is to make your opponent's third shot drop or third shot drive more difficult and to hit it in a way that lets you move forward to the kitchen. You also want to keep 100% consistency. Looking at our technique, the two main things you want to be focusing on in your return is having a compact motion and moving through the ball. So watch how Kennedy hits this return. You see that she doesn't have a very big take back on her forehand there. So a take back is how far you take your paddle back in preparation to hit the shot. When you're hitting a return, you don't want to take it back super far, so maybe about right here. And then you want to use your body weight to run through the ball for your power. So your power shouldn't come solely from your arm. A lot of it should come from your body weight going through the ball. Let's see how that looks again. So the backswing's not too big, and that lets her move forward without risking missing the center of her paddle. So when you have that shoulder backswing, it makes it easier to be accurate in terms of where the ball is hitting your paddle, which you want to be in the dead center. One thing to keep in mind is that if your opponent's hitting super deep serves, you wanna give yourself time before you hit the shot by standing a little bit farther back. So you see Kent's actually positioned about four feet behind that back line, the baseline right now, because when Kennedy hits the serve, it gives him a little bit of extra time to prepare after the shot bounces. If he was standing right on the baseline and she ended up hitting a serve that was really deep, it's really challenging to pick the ball up like that. So sometimes if your opponent's serving hard and deep, standing a little bit farther back is a great way to give yourself more time. In terms of the result we're looking for, we're looking for deep returns that land further in the court. So you wanna try your best to get the return to land farther because that makes it more challenging because your opponent has to let the first shot after their serve bounce. Another cool trick that can help you return better is that if you favor one side, whether that be your forehand or backhand, you can actually shift over in terms of where you're standing to leave that shot more open. So if Kennedy likes her forehand more, she can shift towards the center, and if she gets a serve, then what happens is it's more likely to come to her forehand and if her opponent wants to hit it to the backhand side, it's a lot more challenging because they just don't have as much space in this area. So if you prefer one side, you can do that and you'll end up getting way more returns to that side. Now though, I wanna talk about spin on the return and where you're aiming your returns. So when it comes to spin on the return, you can go for slice, which looks like this, or top spin, which looks like this. Recently, a lot more players have started to use the topspin return because it can be really effective. If you want to go deeper into the topspin return, we made a full video on that. But just know that the main thing you're thinking about with spin is your consistency. So if you prefer your slice return and you make in 100% of those, I'd take that over topspin returns that you only make in 50% of the time. So try to figure out which spin you're more consistent with and that'll be more important than the spin itself. In terms of where you want to aim your return, I personally like to take mine down the middle and the reason for that is when you go down the middle, you limit the chances that you'll miss out to the sides or wide. So by going down the middle, you increase your consistency. What you can also do is try to target the player who you feel has the worst third shot. So if I'm playing and I feel like Kent has a worse third shot than Kennedy, I'll just take more of my returns towards Kent. And if you like those return tips, make sure to like this video. It really helps us grow our channel and grow the game of pickleball. But one of the most important parts of the return is actually what you do after. So after I hit my return, I really wanna focus on getting in as quickly as I can, stopping hopefully right around the kitchen and getting into a split stance. This sets me up to respond to my opponent's third shot. So you wanna hit the ball, and then after you hit the ball, you should move in as quickly as you can to get to this position right here. What you don't wanna do is get caught in this area, because that makes it a lot easier for your opponents to hit the ball at your feet. So she can actually hit it hard and still get it at my feet if I'm standing here. So you as the returner should do whatever you can to get to about right here in this position, right before they make contact with that shot. And the shot that you hit after you do this is called the fourth shot, 
which as I mentioned earlier, is probably the most important part of returning strategy. Before we get into that though, make sure to hit that subscribe button right below the video so that you get suggested all our videos. From time to time, it's great to tune in so that you have new things to try when you go play. When it comes to fourth shots, there's two main types. Defending against a drive or a hard shot like this. So a lot of the time, if you're at the lower level, this is more common. And the second type is defending against a drop where your opponent hits the ball into the kitchen. So here the ball is traveling slower, but you have to account for the fact that you have to reach over the kitchen sometimes and you have a worse angle. So let's talk about both of these. First though, we need to think about what is our goal on the fourth shot? The goal of the fourth shot is to keep your opponents back and to take control of the point. When you're defending against the drive, there's a very specific way that you do this. This starts with your technique. So when you're defending hard shots, the first thing you wanna make sure of is that you have a good ready position. So you wanna be ready for the ball to come at you. If you're standing with your hands down, it takes you a lot longer to get in position to hit the ball than if you have your paddle out in front like this and if it's dangling a little bit towards your backhand because a lot of the time you need to defend your body with a backhand. So when you're waiting for the shot, you should look like this and not this. And that puts you in a better position to defend a drive. The second thing is that when you're defending a hard shot like I just did there, you don't wanna have a loose wrist. So on a lot of shots like your serve or your drive, you do wanna have a loose wrist because that gives you more power. But when you're blocking against power, you actually wanna have a very firm wrist because that makes it easier to use your opponent's power against them. So if you have a loose wrist when your opponent's hitting a really hard shot, it's really easy to miss hit the ball, which has probably happened to you before. So the way that you correct this is by having a firm wrist and using a very compact motion. So you see there, I didn't take a huge swing. And that makes it a lot easier to time your opponent's hard shots. It can be a little tough to get this down because you have to make the decision to be stiff in the time that you see them hitting the ball hard. So it's something to get used to, but once you get better at using that stiff wrist on the hard shots, it's gonna be a lot easier to beat bangers and defend drives. In terms of where you aim these volleys, you wanna go at the depth of your opponent's feet out to their side. So ideally, if your opponents are back, you're aiming somewhere in these areas, so down the middle, out to the sides of the court, but as they start to move forward, your targets are gonna move with them. So when they're in the middle of the court in the transition zone, you actually wanna be making your balls land about here, here in the same place on the other side. And the reason for that is if I try to go really deep when they're in this position, if I draw a line to that target, it actually becomes a pretty mid-height volley for him. So it's harder if I go shorter in the court at the depth of his feet. So to show you how that looks in real time, when they're trying to come in, I wanna go at the depth of their feet like that because it really tangles them up and they have to drop their paddle down, which is tricky and it makes it harder for them to move forward. So to show you again, when I'm defending that drive, if I go at the depth of their feet, it just makes it a lot harder for them to come in. When it comes to defending drops, our technique looks a lot different. So we don't wanna have that firm wrist anymore. You wanna have a loose wrist and go for what we call rolls. So as you see what Kennedy's doing, rolls are where we brush up behind the back of the ball and get topspin to bend the ball over the net. So when your opponent's hitting the drops, a lot of the time you're gonna have to hit them from below the height of the net. So using that topspin is a great way to make the ball drop faster so you can still use power. So in terms of the technique on the roll, all you're really doing, a lot of the time you're gonna have to lean over the kitchen like this, but all you're really doing with your hand, there's not much of a backswing, it's all gonna be coming from your wrist. So I'm brushing up in this windshield wiper motion behind the back of the ball, and I'm taking my paddle from low to high, as of course it's going forward, which is what gives me my power. And the same on the backhand, you're rolling up behind the back of the ball like this. So good rolls look like this. So I'm brushing up behind the back of the ball, getting that top spin, and that top spin also makes it really tricky for your opponents to hit a good ball on that next shot because it accelerates towards them when it bounces. And an important part of defending against a drop is knowing whether or not to let it bounce or whether or not to take it out of the air. So see there, I let the ball bounce. Here, I let it bounce again. But sometimes like this, I take it out of the air. So really, the indicator that you should let the ball bounce is that you can't comfortably take the ball out of the air. So generally, you wanna to try to get the ball out of the air if you can in a way that makes sense. But if you're really having to stretch like this, there it makes more sense to let the ball bounce, let it come up a little bit, so you can get it at a higher point where you're more comfortable. The technique, whether you're doing one or the other, is pretty much the same, but when you're letting the ball bounce, a lot of the time you're gonna hit it farther back. So out of the air, my contact point's way in front of my body, 
but off the bounce, it's more to the side of my body. And I'm probably also getting a little more of my arm into it because I'm hitting it back here. And in terms of where you're aiming, it's exactly the same as when you're defending against a drive. You wanna go at the depth of their feet, out to the sides and get them stretched. When you're hitting against a drop though, you can actually go a lot harder as the ball gets higher, right? So if I'm hitting a drop that's here and I'm making contact with the ball here, I can't go very fast, but if it's here, I can use a really hard roll volley. So you have to be a good judge of how high you're hitting the ball in terms of how much power you can use towards those targets. Now though guys, we're gonna go through some real point examples to show you what happens after your return and fourth shot. And as you'll see, the point can progress pretty differently. So in that point, they tried to use the drop, to which me and Kennedy used our aggressive roll volleys to take control of the point, and that's how we won. There, Drew used the drive, to where I used my defensive volley against that hard shot, got it kind of close to his feet, which got me the point. So there, they used a drop, which I actually surrendered to, so I didn't attack it because I didn't think I had a good opportunity. So I just dinked it back, and we got into a dinking rally, which I used to speed up on and won that point. Barely made that last shot with an overhead. And guys, I'm actually really curious to know what percentage of the points you get into dinking rallies, so let me know in the comments. So there, they actually used a drive, then a drop, which is actually a really good combo. So we had to use the drive defender fourth shot, and then on our sixth shot, or the next shot we hit, we, I used that aggressive roll volley, which got me control of the point. Ooh. So there was a good example of what not to do. What happened there was they hit a great drop, and Kennedy went for a roll volley, but because Kent was already in so far, she didn't have a good opportunity to go at his feet. So that gave him the opportunity to go for a killer volley. So a lot of the time, if you don't have a good look on your roll volley, you might want to surrender and go for a dink or what just happened can happen to you. There, Kent hit some pretty good drives, which we didn't do the best job of keeping them back on and we floated that last one up, which gave him the opportunity to attack. All right, thanks for watching, guys. If you follow the steps that we went through in this video, I guarantee your return and your return strategy will get way better, and you'll give away way less points when your opponents are serving. And if you wanna go deeper into the strategy of dinking and the technique of dinking, watch this.